Okay, so fueling yourself for creative flow so that you don't feel super starving afterward is really about what you're doing before and then what you're doing during and then what you're doing immediately after your creative flow. So the way that I look at this, when you're in a state of creative flow, it's like running a marathon. So the same way that you would prepare your body to run 26 miles is exactly how you prepare yourself for a creative marathon. And the science here, just quickly, is that when you're in creative flow, you're using a part of your brain, you're accessing a part of your brain that you don't normally access. You're not in like autopilot habit mode. You're in creation and expansion mode. So you're using your prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that um, is responsible for higher level thinking, for metacognition, and you're also channeling in through your pineal gland, which is the tiny little pine cone shaped gland. It literally sits in between your right and your left hemisphere, and it integrates your creativity with your action taking. So since you're tapping into this kind of brain activity and ultimately you're actually increasing your brain waves, it, your brain requires a massive amount of energy in the form of glucose. So if you are fueling yourself in a way that promotes and stimulates that, you're not going to feel so hungry afterward. Again, if you ran you know, 10 miles without eating before or during or at all, you'd feel ravenous, you know, within an hour or so after your workout. So it's all about timing and rhythm. And the thing to understand here is that we're going for a long distance. Okay. And the physiology is that you're, you have basically three different energy systems that your body utilizes. In other words, how do you get glucose to your brain when you eat something? three ways. One, through oxidative capabilities, meaning that you are, it's kind of like when you're running long distance, you're breathing in, you're taking in oxygen and utilizing that oxygen to turn some of your stored fat into usable energy in the form of glucose and then shuffling that off to the areas of the body that need it. And that is like a steady, constant state you're taking in just enough oxygen to get that glucose out of stored fat into the bloodstream and out to the working muscles, or in this case, the firing brain. And it can go on forever. Once we tap into this steady state of energy utilization, it can last forever, which is beautiful. So if you're doing something steady, like creative flow, this is the kind of energy system we want to support. The other two are for more short, intense bouts of exercise, super short, and then kind of like two to three minute bouts. So I won't tackle that right now. It's not relevant. So basically, how do you up level your oxidative capabilities. So there are certain nutrients that can help promote that and there's also timing of when you're eating that can also aid in your oxidative metabolism. Woo woo, cool stuff. So in order to get into steady state, basically there are some pre-flow food suggestions, right? We wanna load up with some complex carbohydrates uh, like bananas, like oats, like brown rice, beans are all good. And I have a, a full reference list for foods that you can eat prior to your flow state. And then um, ideally kind of, you know, fueling yourself up within an hour before you go into your creative flow and um, then during. So this is key. You want to do a little dance during your creative efforts. So let's say you're going to create and you're going to do like two to three hours. Now I get into creative flow all the time and I know it's sometimes the, it, the mood just strikes me and I'm in it to win it. And if I get into that creative flow, I don't want to interrupt myself. I'm like, I'm in like my zone of genius. So take this with a grain of salt and learn to coach yourself, right? Again, this is just about like being aware ahead of time that you always kind of want to be feeding yourself so that you can actually, and here's what's key here, you can actually 
increase the number of times you go into a zone of genius. In other words, you, you have a divine download, right? And that's like a whole other training is like how to actually fuel and move your body so that you're literally totally open. Your cells are completely clear and ready to receive creativity. And that's a really, really powerful um, skill that anybody can develop. It's actually part of our superhuman powers and we get to tap into that anytime we want to. It's just a matter of, of training our body, training our physiology, just, just like we do during a workout. So anyway, getting back to um, how you want to keep your energy going while you're in creative flow. So let's say you're going and it's going to be about two, three hours. You want to kind of fuel yourself every half hour. And some during flow food suggestions, walnuts, blueberries particularly, those are my go-to. Walnuts and blueberries actually stimulate the secretion of feel-good hormones. So they're like good mood foods. And while you're in the zone and you're, you're, you're tingling, you want to obviously keep that going. So those are two I definitely recommend. And uh, when you do have that little power snack, you want to get up and move your body. Again, this is about your ability to um, regulate your breathing. So you want to make sure that your breathing is, is deep and rhythmic, that you're not getting into a space of <laughs> short breath because actually at that point you, you increase your heart rate and you tap into some other energy systems which could create more hunger after your creative flow. So you want to make sure that your breathing is pretty regular and you don't necessarily have to do some breathing exercises, but I find for my clients, for myself personally, getting up and just giving yourself a good stretch, maybe a few Qi Kong movements just to keep your energy flow going, and then get back into it. So you don't want to interrupt yourself. That's really essential. You want to keep the flow going. You to power yourself up. Just think about it like if, if you're out running a marathon. So, so my athletes, right, when I'm training them to run marathons, I train them to be able to take in... Um, we call it like dosing, take in carbo dosing yes. throughout the uh, 26 miles. So they're eating while they're running. And you can eat while you create, right? It's not going to interrupt you from doing what you have to do. Post flow food suggestions. Now is an opportunity to um, get in some good healthy fats and some brain healing foods because you just did a workout. And, you know, Right after your creative bout, if you're feeling hungry, the best thing you can do right away is actually to move a little bit, okay? So how do you move? Well, how are you going to move post-marathon? You're not going to continue running. You're going to stop and you're going to stretch. So going through some stretching exercises, perhaps even some yoga moves, again, doing some Qigong, something very light, just to keep that blood flow going and keep the circulation going. And you might find that your, your hunger stimulation, your senses aren't as heightened. And then you're going to eat a, like a, an official meal about one to two hours post-creative flow. And you can incorporate some um, feel-good foods again here, like some delicious dark chocolate, um, nut butters. My go-to usually is um, I like to do like a big... Uh, salad, I you know leafy greens. I love Asian pears and nut butter. That's always like a, a, a go-to for me. So big leafy green salad, and then perhaps like a nut butter um, dipped with some Asian pear. Um, and then there are some herbs and spices that are great supplements, um, particularly turmeric, which is a great healing food and a uh, healing spice in general. Cinnamon. It's an anti-inflammatory. Paprika is a stimulator. Um, and then maca. Maca is like my go-to for everything. Maca is a Peruvian root, pulverized. You can get it in the health food store. And it is like absolutely a uh, something that is, to, is believed to decalcify your pineal gland. So again, just sparking your creativity, which is yay. Okay, so a little bit about like additional tips, right? Treat yourself. Treat yourself. So an occasional cookie or a glass of wine is more about like your your um, mental state, right? A little reward after a creative bout, again, is just going to infuse in the brain that this is something positive and it's going to stimulate you to do more of it. Loading up with B vitamins. So a lot of the foods that I give on a food recommendation have B vitamins in them. Why? Because B vitamins actually promote the growth and strengthening of myelin. 
and myelin is a type of protein that actually covers your nervous system. It wraps those synapses in this really protective coating. And that's what develops your skill. So you want to improve a skill at something, you want to develop stronger and more myelin sheaths that coat the exact pathway that you're calling in. So B vitamins help grow your myelin. Stay hydrated with water. It's like, yes, duh, but it's, it's worth always saying throughout the day, always and forever. And that will also help you regulate your hunger sensations. Um, move. So prior to a creative flow, I would start moving the body, going for a, a light walk, you know, something very light, light aerobic activity is, is great, or even just light strength training or some yoga. And as I mentioned, stretching immediately post. Um, and here's the thing, this is my rule, my hard and fast rule for food in general, is always listen to your body and its cravings. I could give you all the tips in the world, but really tune in. And I have a separate worksheet, or I should say opportunity sheet, that is all about your food love mindset. And it's really just disengaging from what you think that you're supposed to do and tapping into what is it that my body really craves right now? If all rules were off the table, if all bets were off, or if all responsibilities were non-existent, I didn't have to feed anybody else, and I didn't care what anybody else thought, and I didn't think about calories or anything, what would I want? And that again takes some practice, but listening to your body. I have some clients that are so finely dialed into this that they literally, like me, will have a moments where they're just like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm craving an orange. I must need vitamin C. So it's like dialing in and seeing like, oh, I must be deficient in this. That's why I'm craving an orange right now. Um, pregnant women are the masters of this. So get to eat like a pregnant woman in the sense of really listening to your body's cravings and you'll never go wrong. Also listening to your feelings of hunger and really identifying what those body sensations are like for you versus emotional feelings of hunger because those are just habits. And again, that's a whole other training. Eating seasonally and regionally. This is key too in all nutrition. You want to eat what's grown around you and you want to eat what's grown during the season that you're in. Why? Because the nutrients are more dense. And that is, again, optimizing your body's ability to perform at peak existence. And I, I have trainings on that as well, but that's the, the long and the short of it. Um, and as you put this into practice, you're going to see that you stay satiated and that you stay fueled and that you stay creative and that you're having more creative flow, which is amazing, which is what we all want as entrepreneurs and leaders. So hopefully this was helpful. I'm sure it was. And I have an opportunity sheet that goes along with this that has some food recommendations, some additional tips, and some fabulous recipes. Much love. Peace out.